be clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And you can hear me too over there. Amen. Well, I just want to first and foremost thank God for his presence in this place today and for the Hayes family bishop, daughters, and the church family, and everybody who came from New York, Brooklyn, South Carolina, Georgia, or wherever you came from to honor this man of God and in in a posthumous way, the woman of God that's not here but yet here. Amen. I looked at the daughters, all three of them. One, five, no, and I saw Pastor Beulah in Miranda, in Mindy, in Tasha. Amen. They all reflect and contain part of her not just biologically, genetically, but in mannerism, antics, and in things that they do, and everything. I was just looking up there and seeing a composite of Pastor Dula Hayes. And I'm kind of a joy to be here today to just honor Jerry. Amen. This is great man of God that has demonstrated true greatness over the years, not just in 19 years, but from the time I met them many years ago, they were walking in a demonstration of greatness. Oftentimes, we don't understand what greatness is. We think greatness is the ability to speak, the ability to have a gift. Many have great gifts, but they themselves are not great. Greatness comes out of a man's or woman's character and their determination to condescend the men of low degree, to be humble, to have a spirit and an attitude of servitude, to serve others first by serving God through serving others, and to esteem others greater than themselves. Amen. Not, not many people can or will do that. I don't understand what greatness is from a biblical perspective. But I thank God for this man and he has, how he has demonstrated greatness and has did over the no, years that I've known them. I want to acknowledge all of our pastors here today. Their names have already been called, or as they like to say, protocol has already been established. <laughs> but I just thank God for everybody that is here today to be with the Hayes family, Bishop Jerry and Miranda, Mindy, Tasha, and the church family here. Glow. It's glow. Amen. We learn to not allow the enemy to have his way in yes. nothing that we're doing. Whether we are celebrating the homegoing service of somebody or whether, whether, whatever it might be, we know that there is a divine presence. And if God is there, and we know he is, not just in a way where he's omnipresent, but he's here in a covenant way. He's here to give us peace. And the song says, thank you, daughter. Bishop Hayes said, where's she been? And she been with us all along. <laughs> Here and my husband. Amen. You better not stand in God for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Before I thank you, say what I'm going to say briefly, I want to share something. And I told him he called me not too long ago, not many days ago. And we talked and I said, well, will you send something then? But you didn't get a chance to be here to speak for our pastors and bishops in the different parts of the world. And he said, I will. And so he sent it by email. 
and it says this on the on behalf of the International Mission Department. That's that one, five, and low battery. Through the office of our presiding bishop, Michael Goins, I would want I would want to posthumously appreciate the support we received from the late Pastor Beulah Hayes. Through her immense involvement, we were able to reach out to many nations, including Zimbabwe, Malawi, Zambia, Congo, South Africa, India, Nigeria, and Uganda, just to name some. We join you in celebrating her life, well lived by touching the hearts of many, and helping us to fulfill the Great Commission to cultures and people around the world, humbly submitted Bishop Lucky Abapete, International oh, Mission Coordinator Fellowship of Interdependent Churches. And he wanted me to convey that to Bishop Jerry and Miranda, and Mindy and Tasha and this family, glow how valuable and precious Bula was and is in her memory, in her legacy, that we will always retain whatever we do, we will think in terms of Bula. And it is good thoughts. Amen. Not sad thoughts. Yes. Not grievous thoughts. There's a time of grief and this family is still adjusting. Don't try to adjust too quick. Don't force adjustment. You will adjust as you go forward. But when somebody has been that significant as a wife, as a mother, a spiritual mother, and a pastor, and a woman of God, a servant of God, you don't get over them. You set their legacy and memory in proper perspective and in the place where it should be. Amen. 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 I, I, I still from time to time think about Beulah. If anybody was in my corner, Beulah was yeah. in my corner. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And she, gave, she supported me as a, as a, uh, from the time I met her, from the time she departed to be with the Lord and is now in the presence of the Lord, rejoicing and praising God beyond anything that we and our finite human minds and abilities can stand on and comprehend. Ah, uh, you look at it going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to use for thought. I know after so many years of ministering that I, I can't be lengthy. I've learned, Rochelle, to not be lengthy at occasions like this, except the Holy Spirit says otherwise. Yeah. Amen. And I try to teach my son my pastoral Episcopal sons and elders and whatever they might be, how to know the time, to know the season. And there's just no way that I can be lifted, to be honest, but that's food. And I'm not even going to open the book. It's in my heart, in my mind. Amen. Oh, it's not me, even in my mind, but in my heart. That is the word of faith that I preach on. I've been going for 43, 44 years. And he said, Brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and reaching forth to those things which are before me. I press, I pursue the pride of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I would add to that to give me a biblical premise. When the children of Israel was getting ready to go into the land of promise, I think it was the prophet Joshua. God spoke to him to tell them to see that they go forward. And I want to use that as a thought today. Going forward by grace. Would that be all right? That just came to me, said it. Going forward by grace. All of us will have challenges and obstacles and difficulties in our lives of different types, Minister McLean. We will have these things that will 
be impediments and things to try to block our advancement and our progression as believers, Christians. One thing we have that nobody else has in the world, no other people of faith or any type of religion, any type of ideology or philosophy has, and that is a blessed hope. Yeah. Nobody has this hope, this true hope that is praised upon he who rose again yeah. and is now seated at the right hand of God, the Father, as our intercessor, elder brother, and he ever liveth to make intercessions. And it is through him that our names have been recorded and written in heaven. And for each of us, regardless of how different it might be to you and what you're facing right now, in a real way, a natural way, a financial way, a relational way, an emotional way, it doesn't matter about who just won the presidency of the United States and who was the president elect. There's one who never changes. There's one who's sovereign and transcendent, who reigns in heaven and over the armies of heaven and all the kingdoms of men upon the earth. This one who's in absolute control of everything. Nothing catches him off guard. It might catch you off guard because we're so finite. But it doesn't catch him off guard because he controls, he orchestrates, and determines everything and sets the boundaries of nations he said the nations to him are the drop of the bucket. He reigns and one, rules. Five, and four, he, the Bible says in Daniel 4, he sets up kings and pulls them down and sets over nations the basis of men. Nothing can get him off going. Yes, and he works all things together for the good of them who love him and who are the called according to his purpose. We don't understand it, but we understand it what better by now. And oftentimes we find ourselves caught in the midst of transition of changes in our lives, personal life, and in the life of our culture. We've seen so many changes, things that have changed, oftentimes for the worse. But yet God is still sovereign, and he's still in control. And all things are happening according to as he has decreed and determined we are a part of God's predetermined counsel, and we've been conformed to the likeness and image of his dear son. And so I want to say to each of you today, and especially to Bishop Jerry, to uh, Miranda, and to Mindy, and to Tasha, and the Glow family, see that you go forward. Going forward with grace. God always gives grace, amen, to go forward. There's nothing that is so difficult or extreme or perplexing or grievous that can override or be greater than the grace of God. Amen. Many people cannot go forward because they reject grace. They insist to persist in a state of depression, discouragement, frustration, grief, you name it. But God always gives grace to go forward. And he said, he will not allow us to be tempted, tried and tested. About that which he is, we are able, but we're with the temptation. Ah, we're with the test. We're with the pain and the struggle and the opposition. Make a what? Route of escape that we might be able to bear it or to bear it under the onslaught or the opposition or the persecution or whatever it might be. He gives grace to go forward regardless what's Confronted, we're confronted with He gives grace to go forward when we're troubled and when we're going through sickness and when we get bad news from the doctor. Uh, he gives grace to go forward when we've lost a loved one. He gives grace to go forward when we've lost our job. He gives grace to go forward when our candidate didn't win. That's true. His grace is always sufficient. Yes. Yes. It is always more than enough. Yes. Amen. Let me repeat that with emphasis. His grace is always sufficient. It is always more than enough. To empower, to enrich, to strengthen, to invigorate. Glory to God. To, to encourage, 
to give peace in spite of the storm, in spite of the bad news, in spite of the loss, in spite of the trials, in spite of the troubles, the peace of God. Yeah.